Hi, Chris. Uh, congratulations on producing the best coming of age movie this summer, Didi. Can you Thank let you. us know what about this movie inspired you to produce it? Well, I think when we read it on the page, you know, I'm from the Bay Area and it really resonated with me. I had never seen a coming of age story that was so like that mirrored parts of my own um, like growing up in the Bay Area, growing up as a child of immigrants. Um, and then I think the like most important part is probably that um, Chris, went, uh, the character, um, you know, he wasn't like an excellent Asian kid. Um, he's just kind of a normal, just kind of a normal teen. I feel like that for me, when I was growing up was a big, a big thing. Like, not that I was a bad student, just that, you know, there were all these expectations that I was like some sort of math whiz or like <laughs> going to go to med school. Um, and I, I'm just not that person. So, um, yeah, it was really refreshing and so relatable to me on the page. Mm -hmm. Uh, what challenges did you encounter in the making of this film as a producer? Um, you know, I'm not I'm not the boots on the ground producer. So um, my challenge really comes like as like, you know, an executive producer. I think um, I the challenge is in the picking <laughs> and then in the in the negotiations afterwards. Um uh, and in between, it's sort of like, you know, I already picked, I already made that choice about like, you know, trusting this team implicitly. I mean, I fell in love with Sean and Carlos um, pretty much like immediately and knew that we were in good hands there. It was just like the worry about sort of facing the indie landscape, the acquisitions landscape, knowing like I didn't have numbers to back me up. Like I knew... I know as an Asian person that Asian people are starving for movies, but it, and then there was like, you know, in, while we were, there was like a Kinsey report that was released. I mean, there were all these, I didn't have outside of my knowledge. I didn't have like the numbers to back me up that this would be a smart investment. I just was, it was a gamble. Um, you know, we didn't have, according to the industry star power, um, but to me, Joan Chen is iconic. I mean, Last Emperor. I mean, I just like she's so I kept hearing you don't have any stars in your film. And I was just like, we literally have like one of the biggest stars that we could have in our film to me. So mm -hmm. it's like we weren't even like talking the same language. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that's probably one of the biggest mm -hmm. hurdles that mm -hmm. I had to face. Talk about having this Asian cast in this movie and also working with Sean Wong. Yeah, he's, um, so we read the script, absolutely loved it, um, knew there was something really special to it. Uh, met Carlos first, Carlos Lopez Estrada, uh, the producer, and then I just knew, you know, him from his work. Then we met Sean, and I just, having been an actor, I think there's something I'm looking for in a director that is someone who's complete, who's completely in charge, but at the same time, open to collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that, you know, Sean has that in spades. He, he takes charge of a room. He's incredibly confident. He has brilliant ideas. Um, at the same time, he's approachable and um, very funny and just like a good friend. Um, so it was like talking to him, especially as like two Bay Area, you know, growing have both of us having growing up in the Bay Area. I think we just had like a lot in common. We hit it off. I knew exactly what he was talking about. Um, and then we, yeah, we, I just knew that he had vision. And then I, after that chat, um, after he was telling us like all the ideas of like kind of telling the story of the internet in this way and, um, you know, in a way that, you know, we hadn't really seen before, um, I just knew that he was exceptional. And then um, and then I watched his short, Nai Nai and Waipo, um, probably on the heels of that meeting. And I mean, it blew me away. Like I hadn't seen like the everyday home life treated so um, just like, 
it, it was just elevated. Like it just made it so special. I mean, Fremont, California looks like the, you know, Capri, it, it's beautifully lit. Like it's just like a beautiful space. And um, the story was so touching of just, and it felt so, like I could think about my Lola's living together. You know, it's just like such a cool, the, first of all, the multi-generational household. That's just a given. And that's something that I can understand. My mom lives with us. Um, she takes care of the kids. They have a special relationship. Um, yeah, it was incredibly relatable, but also just so beautifully done. And with such care, um, you can really, you know, when you can see like a respect for your elders, like I don't have to explain it to you or, you know, or anything like that. You just like, no, it's just in our culture. Um, I mean, Sean had the same thing and I could, you, you could see that it came across in the film in this really delightful and playful way that um, after watching 99 Waipo, I was like, yeah, I, I don't have to think about this. This is a given slam dunk. So uh, you're also an actress and a writer. What made you go into film production? Oh, for, well, first of all, I was an actress and, um, you know, I came up in San Francisco, like indie theater scene. There were no parts for me. <laughs> so I had to start writing. Um, you know, the only thing I could really do was like Shakespeare because they like were the only people who sort of like casted, you know, in a quote unquote colorblind way. Um, but otherwise it was like, you know, all roles for white girls. <laughs> and then, so I started writing um, and then, you know, but that, you know, that's its own thing. It takes so much of your creative soul to do that, um, which I was happy to do until I had children. And then when I had two children. <laughs> um, my second kid is really when it tipped the scales into, I got to do something a like less powerless. Like I need to make decisions. I can't sit around and I can't wait um, for them to pick me. And um, so that's kind of when I started to find films to invest in is after I had my second kid. <laughs> do you think Hollywood is changing already with regards to getting representation in movies and films and TV shows? I hope so. I think Dee Dee is a test case. I think it's like, I think a lot of us, myself included, are just watching just to see. Um, I think, I think there's a face value representation that, that we've done, um, you know, where we just do like, well, the best friend is no longer white too, right? It's like the lead girl's white, but then her best friend could be any ethnicity, like, which is like, not really getting to the heart of like what we're talking about here. Um, it's like, it's sort of like, it's like if we're always telling stories about Romeo and Juliet, why do they always have to both be white all the time? Um, and why do you wait for like Juliet's best friend to be, why can't Juliet be a, a woman of color? Um, and that's kind of like, that's kind of what I think Dee Dee is like, you know, cause it's like a coming of age film. But at the center of it is like a, a person of color. And what that brings is like all these nuances and all these cultural experiences that a lot of people haven't either haven't seen or recognize immediately. Um, and that's why it like makes it so fresh. Mm -hmm. So we're trending in the right way, but um, we're not quite there. <laughs> so can I talk about your Filipino roots? I You mentioned yeah. your mom is living with you and how were you raised as a Filipino or American or? Oh yeah, I was Filipino. I mean, um, I grew up in like South San Francisco um, in the Bay Area, you know, um, church every Sunday. That's probably the only place I ever saw like 200 Filipino at one people at one time. Um, <laughs> I went to Saramonte Mall all the time. Like, you know, that is like making its rounds um online as like the most filipino mall in america um yeah i mean i ate rice three meals a day <laughs> like filipino you know i don't um but um having left like i think it took me sort of like leaving my house and going to college to really value like what that or even define like what being filipino really meant like it's like you you kind of are taken out of that and and like have such great appreciation for it. Um, yeah, that it's like a family based culture, you know. Um, 
so I was saying like, my dad's not in the picture, but my mom is one of 10 kids and um, all of the siblings, all 10 of the siblings live in Oceanside, California, which is where I was born. Um, my uncle and aunt, my uncle is a nuclear engineer and that's why he got a job at San Onofre mm -hmm. at the nuclear plant. And my aunt uh, was a nurse. And that's why we ended up in Oceanside, California. And that's where I, yeah, like I said, I was born. That's where my grandparents are buried. Um, yeah. And uh, we all kind of like, that's kind of like home base, I would say for me and my family, the Quintos clan. Um, yeah. I mean, I have 24 first cousins on that side and you know, I think I live in LA and then somebody, some like two people live in the Bay Area, three people live in the Bay Area, but everyone else is in like Orange County. Mm -hmm. So we still get together all the time. Um, Christmas is like a hundred people, Lechon at my house. Um, it's insane. <laughs> um, yeah, I just kind of, I grew up like very, very Filipino. I wouldn't no, but I've only ever really been to the Philippines once. I was supposed to go. Um, we were trying to plan a family trip in like New Year's 2021, but then of course the pandemic happened. So I have to like replan that at some point. But yeah, I would say just very Filipino. And and your parents are from what province? Do you know? Um, they're for, both from Quezon City. Ah. Um, yeah, and they met at MIT. <laughs> Mapua Institute of Technology, <laughs> the other MIT. If you, had, <laughs> if you had a dream project, what would it be like for producing? I would love to find a Filipino American rom com. Um, yeah, just like something that highlights like I don't I don't know like a great Filipino wedding would be awesome. Love to have like that money dance in there. <laughs> maybe some tinickling at the reception you know just like a great um yeah a rom-com I think I would I would love to find that how what would you advise these uh, filmmakers to make it to Hollywood like uh if for an award for for getting an award it's a good question um I think when I picked the name for the company unapologetic um it was aspirational for me and I think, I think filmmakers and any creative, I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Don't explain, don't explain your culture. You don't have to, don't apologize for it. Like, you know, I don't need to know what every single dish is or like why you do mono, just like do it. And, you know, trust that in your specificity like the more specific you get the more universal it kind of turns out to be ironically um i think like dd is hyper specific right it's bay area 2008 like very very specific and i think like because it's so specific everyone everyone gets it mm -hmm. um he's painted like the clearest picture mm -hmm. and um Sometimes I think I've, I've read a lot of scripts where there's just, you don't need to teach us about your culture, like, um, because it almost feels like an apology. Just, just do it. <laughs> Love it. So what's yeah. next for you? Um, let's see, we're going to, uh, we have our first doc, uh, documentary project coming up. Um, so that is about a man named Benny the Jet. Arquides, who grew up as a kickboxer and then who is a professional kickboxer. And then he transitioned into um, fight choreography uh, for films. So he kind of was like the big guy. He trained like everyone so much so that Keanu Reeves is um, executive producing and Fisher Stevens is producing and Keanu Reeves is doing it because he like idolizes the man. So, um, <laughs> I mean... Yeah, who who better who would know fight choreography better <laughs> than Keanu Reeves? So it's um directed by a woman named Jennifer Teixeira. And then of course Benny, our subject, is half Native American, and his wife is um 
uh, also just a fixture in the Native American community. They're like leaders and um, it's a little bit of a love story in a sports doc. Well, congratulations and more power to you and hope to see you soon. Thank you so much, Shannon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, awesome. All right. Thanks, Janet. Thank Talk you. To you soon. Bye. Bye.